In this video, we are going to cover beta oxidation. This is the process of taking a free fatty acid and preparing it to be used for energy. The ultimate goal is to turn free fatty acids into multiple acetyl-CoA molecules that will be used in the Krebs cycle. However, other important products include NADH, H+, and FADH2. This process involves three main steps. The formation of acyl-CoA, the transport of acyl-CoA, and the formation of acetyl-CoA molecules. The first step is taking a free fatty acid and making it usable within the beta oxidation system. This means adding coenzyme A to the free fatty acid, making it acyl-CoA. This process uses two phosphates from an ATP, making it AMP instead of ADP. And also, it requires the enzyme acyl-CoA synthetase. The free fatty acid used is made up of a long chain of carbons. The typical number of carbons within one free fatty acid usually varies between 12 and 18, but other numbers outside this range have been observed. The next step of prepping the fatty acid is moving into the mitochondrion. This transfer requires a molecule called carnitine. The carnitine attaches itself to the acyl molecule, breaking off the coenzyme A, and becomes acyl carnitine. The carnitine shuttle involves the mitochondrial membrane protein carnitine acyl carnitine translocase. This protein acts as a revolving door which takes an acyl carnitine molecule into the mitochondrion at the same time as it pushes an empty carnitine molecule out of the mitochondrion. After the acyl carnitine has entered the mitochondrion, the trade-off is reversed by breaking off the carnitine and adding back a coenzyme A from inside the mitochondrion. The carnitine then goes back out of the mitochondrion using the same carnitine shuttle system to grab another acyl molecule. What is important about carnitine, other than its function with beta oxidation, is that it is not an essential molecule, which means our bodies can produce it on its own. Many supplements boast about containing this in their formula, but there is insufficient evidence to show that intake of this nutrient, which we can already produce on our own, is helpful in fat metabolism. This next process is the actual oxidation process with the previously mentioned steps considered to be prepping steps. This oxidation covers four reactions that recur again and again for each pair of carbons that break off the acyl-CoA to become acetyl-CoA. The first reaction changes the acyl-CoA into trans-delta-2 enoyl-CoA, which produces an FADH2. The enzyme for this is, you guessed it, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. So after the first reaction of dehydration, the next reaction is a hydration, adding an H2O molecule to the delta-2 trans-enol-CoA, making it 3-hydroxyacyl-CoA. The enzyme for this is enoyl-CoA hydratase. The third reaction, using the enzyme 3-hydroxyacyl-CoA dehydrogenase, performs the familiar step of creating NADH and H+, which also creates the product 3-ketoacyl-CoA. The final step is the actual cleaving of an acetyl-CoA from the main chain of acyl-CoA. This process uses another coenzyme A with the help of the enzyme thiolase. As mentioned before, these four steps keep going until the last split of a four-carbon acyl-CoA. When the four carbons split into two carbon molecules each, these are both acetyl-CoA molecules. So let's recap on the math and do so with an example of a 14-carbon chain fatty acid. For each pair of carbons, the end result is one acetyl-CoA. That makes seven acetyl-CoA molecules. This does not mean that there are seven FADH2 molecules, nor seven NADH and H plus molecules. The reactions that create these hydrogen carriers do not occur for the last pair of carbons because, as mentioned, they automatically become acetyl-CoA during the split of a 4-carbon chain of acyl-CoA. So a 14-carbon chain fatty acid will result in 7 acetyl-CoA, 6 NADH and H+, and 6 FADH2. What you will need to know for this video is the energy required to make an acyl-CoA molecule from a free fatty acid, the importance and the role of carnitine, the four steps of the formal oxidation process along with all its products, 
and how many of each products produced when given the carbon chain length.